I've spoke my truth. No! No! There is no my truth. There is the truth, and there's your opinion. There what is up, everybody? It is finally here, the reunion special that no one really needs because all it does is make everybody look bad they spent the whole season making the guys look bad and to be fair the guys spent the whole season making the guys look bad but in this reunion special we realize a lot of things one no one was innocent well a few people were less guilty but no one was really a hundred percent innocent and all of them were not ready for marriage and the experts are not experts which is what we already know and it was all a plot and it was all a conspiracy and it's all going crazy yes all of that happened but first make sure you comment like subscribe hit the bell for notifications so you know when new videos come out i definitely appreciate all the support if you want to support more you can always become a member now or you can always send a super thanks whatever any support is appreciated but at the very least comment subscribe all the things thank you so much i definitely appreciate it i do not take it for granted we are halfway to 1000 when we start doing that live show i'm looking forward to that i'm excited but right now i'm even more excited about this crazy show that is the reunion with married at first sight because it it's not it, none of it's real none of it is real and it just proved it on this show I've said from the beginning, at the very least, the producers manipulate the process. And not only that, but the cast was in on it and they admitted it. They tried to downplay it on the females part, but yet we find out that they're all in on it and it's insane. So let's get right into it. We're going to do it a little bit different this time. Not going to be each couple at a time. We're just going to go through the reunion and hit some of the high points. See what y'all think, because I sure as hell just was. That's it. Just sitting here with people who treated you poorly and haven't taken any accountability. Zero. Some people hid. Brennan, Cam, you did too. <laughs> so she starts right off by just calling people. This is why for the whole season, for the whole season, I was pretty much, Brennan is a douchebag. Now towards the end, I was saying, He's still a douchebag, but they definitely painted him out to be the villain and painted her out to be the victim. But during this whole reunion, or whole half of this reunion special, she's starting to show that she likes to stir the pot a little bit and call everyone out. Whether it's true or not, some of it's hard to say, but some of it I just don't believe. For one, Cam was one of the few guys that I said I think was a, some, a decent guy for the most part. And you know what? My opinion on that did not change during this. The only thing we find out is... Well, we're, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. In this situation, because we know that nothing is actually going to be resolved from this, we just all have to know that all of us sitting here know the truth. Also okay, the problem with that statement, and the, the only female that I'm saying I think really probably got the most raw deal is Becca, because I think that Austin wasn't honest with her, and the whole thing towards the end was just getting uncomfortable with the intimacy issue. But setting it up by saying, we know none of this is going to get resolved. There's going to be no truth told. Getting that out before anyone says anything. Setting the stage, basically saying, all of them over there are lying. All of us are, where, are, are you know, in coat, you know, or together in this. They all wore pink for in solidarity with their femininity, uh, with their womanhood, with their strong, whatever. The fact is, is they formulated this whole thing by separating the guys separating the girls letting the girls like form this click and now they're setting the stage to basically trash on the guys as well now you if you've been watching these videos you know that i have trashed on these guys the whole season the whole season i have revoked every single one of their man cards however this did not if you in my opinion, if you're looking at this objectively, this did not let make the females look good. It did not. It just did not make the women look good. The only one that, at least in this first part, did not look super bad is Becca. But in the beginning, she set the stage by basically trying to get the audience to look at the men and say, they're 100% wrong, we're 100% right, there's no gray area here, it's just black and white. Which is just not true. It's just not true. We talk about that we want on camera, and there's things we don't, and that's something we all do. None of us have been on a reality show. We were True. like, no idea what to expect, so we thought, True. let's all band together. Let's not give the producers the control to spin the narrative however they want. And yet, they still did. They still, of course, spun the narrative, but the key there is that they all came together, okay? Uh, seems like the whole cast, with the exception of Michael and Chloe, because they came on later, and decided that they were going to make the narrative. 
become actors, if you will. And the interesting thing about this is he's pointing that out. He's saying that we did this. Never once do the females, the women, deny this. Never once. It actually comes out that they were in on it. So they spend most of the episode trying to spin why they were in on it and how they were manipulated and how they couldn't find their voice to say no. Yet in this special, you find your voice just fine. There's a problem there. Now, it was wrong on everyone's part. Never should you... You do. That's true. This whole thing about the cameras, you knew what you were getting into. You should have. And you know what? If you didn't think having cameras in your life and and trying to make a marriage work was going to be difficult, then quite frankly, you're dumb. You're dumb. So, yes, all you guys, if you thought that this was going to be easy with the cameras in it, you're idiots. You just are. But the women were not innocent in this. That is true. They should not have gone along with it. They should have put it out there on the camera and said, you just told me that we need to work this out, you know, and figure things out so we can make a narrative. And Brendan and Emily kind of had a little bit of that with Emily saying, hey, you know, oh, he made me delete the camera, the diary cams. However, even that was a little bit of stretch of the truth. At least you're getting two varying stories by him saying, well, we talked about this and we agreed. And her saying, no, we didn't agree. I mean, I did it because you wanted it and I was trying to appease you. So you see, there's a lot of problems here with stories we are getting. Why are you making it seem like it's just a bad thing that we united together to come up with a plan that benefited us all? That was a control mechanism. You guys could have... Okay, control mechanism from Claire, the master manipulator. And I don't care how it went with her and Cameron. I don't believe her. I think that for the most part in their relationship, she was wrong. Now, Brennan, he was a douche. I don't change that. Never are you going to hear me say he's some great guy that was somehow completely twisted by the camera. However, I think he is telling the truth here and saying, yes, y'all could have come at any point and said no. Now, is it possible that it could have been some manipulation? I guess I don't really buy it, especially how Emily acted in this special. I, I don't buy it. I just don't. I think that he was the big douchebag, but I feel like she was painted in this light of he's a douchebag, she's the victim through the whole season. I think that's where the production comes in, when in reality, she had some faults of her own. Was she the main fault? Maybe not. I'm not saying she was. I don't think she was. But I think that they definitely did what production does and decide, okay, villain, good person. Who's going to be painted which way? And that's just what they did. They had a really hard time with it with Cameron and Claire. I'll say that, which is why well, another reason why I believe Cameron over over Claire. Time this happens when everybody plots and plans and you screw up the whole experiment. This show is thought through. The experts spend an inordinate amount of time trying to match you up with. No, they don't. They spend an inordinate amount of time trying to figure out what makes ratings. So Kevin Frazier, as he goes on his little rant with saying, how are y'all going to mess up the process with this formulation? You know what? This, the, the cast is not at fault for this. They had this big conspiracy. Yes, it's kind of a conspiracy theory because they all banded together. It's kind of funny, really. I mean, if you think about it, not good if you're, you're wanting to find love on one of these shows and you really believe in it, but... They banded together to come up with this, and yet he has this whole thing about they do all these things and they figure out all these things. The experts are trying to do ratings. I don't care what they say. They sat there and watched Brennan say, I'm just the most selfless person I know, and let him on the show not thinking, hey, that's a little narcissistic, you know. There's one example. Let's go through the interviews and see all the red flags, because I'm sure there's a lot. As I said before, put a body language expert in there when they're doing these interviews guarantee you'll weed out the ones who ain't there or at least most of them who are not there for the right reasons you're still gonna have some that bail because they're not attracted to the person but y you'll weed out a lot more guarantee it yes i went along with, with it what other option did you give me i wanted to be your wife and do right by you and doing right by you meant following what you were you say what your lead you were the puppet like you were the master i was the puppet nice and he immediately says, Freudian slip there, because you said the truth. You were the puppet, I was the... <laughs> she she puppet mastered this whole thing. If you watched her with the other, other girls when they were one-on-one, -on -one, she was automatically, like, trying to 
formulate how these things can go, trying to get controversy going. Like, because she was working on her, you know, counseling degree or whatever it is, I don't know if she fancied her some, some way of, like, manipulating the mind. I don't know. Either way, she, again, it cannot say no. And none of the females said, no, we didn't go along with this, because they know that they did. So instead, they're trying to make it seem like, you made me do it. So... You, I, you, you had me doing this, and I was the puppet, and you were the puppet. I mean, you were the puppet. I mean, I was the puppet. I can't, I can't figure this out. I can't figure it out. Yes, Claire had her own agenda, and he goes on to say some interesting things, like she loved her boyfriend, she had a relationship. I don't know if any of that's true. I don't, but I definitely, with their relationship, am more keen to believe not or more keen to not believe Claire and more keen keen to believe Cameron in these situations. I just, you know, it's just one of those things that he comes off more honest, just like with the guys. If I had to choose someone who was worse in the relationship, it's going to be Austin. It's going to be Brennan. Even though I'm saying, I think some of the other people played a role. It's definitely going to be those two for sure. No doubt. She said, how are we going to get out of this? You need to come up with a plan. And I came up with a difference of religion. She straight up said, I don't care about religion. I don't care about how my kids. <laughs> so the whole religion difference there was a formulated play. I mean, mind blown. Look, even I did not think that the reality TV romance circuit would sink to these levels. Like, I mean, this is this is insane how no one even really had a remote. OK, maybe, maybe Becca. But I think she was also not good hanging out with some of the other girls. So I think they were bad influences also. But I think maybe Becca had some of the the right idea. I think Cameron going into it had the right idea. Maybe it faded quickly, but I think he had the right idea. For the most part, I don't think anyone else really was in it for the right reasons. To fill the narrative that you wanted. But what, but what is my narrative? I literally have none you except to be married. That you wanted to leave. Yes, because I'm married to someone who hates me. <laughs> <laughs> it almost seems logical. So their whole thing was they argue back and forth about context and how things happen. She said, you said I, you wanted a slim European and, you know, you weren't attracted to me. The context of that, at least coming from him, was that we had a conversation about what what we told the experts we wanted. Bad conversation, by the way. You should not be having it. She told him, which clearly was complete opposite of him or what he says, and he told her, I said something about a slim European. She takes that and says, I can read between the lines, and says, I'm not what you wanted. He never claimed to say that. Now, again, magically, some of these things aren't on, on camera. And I think that one reason they're not showing it, because I do not buy with all the cameras that they don't have footage of some of these conversations. I don't buy it. I think they're not showing it because they don't want really the truth to come out because they want the controversy and they want people guessing. They're trying to do ratings, of course. Like I said, Cameron has been more honest and been more trustworthy for me throughout pretty much the whole season. So I tend to believe him more than I believe Claire. If she's saying, you said you weren't attracted to me, and then he gives the context, I tend to believe that the context was left out and she just took, you're not attracted to me, which is what he never said. Are you saying that you were in cahoots also, that your relationship with Austin was not authentic, that this was all perpetrated for the cameras? Personally, I don't know what was real between Austin and I. It was a very... Okay, so she's saying, again, another opportunity to say, that's not true. I thought it was all real. He's lying or he orchestrated the whole thing. Instead, I can't tell what's real or not. All of them had some conversation with each other. Girls, guys, all of them, except for Michael and Chloe, and had this conversation about, okay, we're going to do certain things on camera. They became just actors, all of them. Now the women are trying to make it seem like it was all the men and yet not take responsibility for saying, yeah, maybe we shouldn't have said, okay, we'll go along with that. The men were wrong. The women are not taking any responsibility. None of them were ready. If you were ready, you would have said, no, of course I'm out. I'm out. I'm not doing this if you're not going to be in it for real. So, like I said, I think that Becca took an opportunity or, or didn't take the opportunity to say no. Now, I tend to believe her that she probably wanted to make it work more than most, so I'll give her that benefit of the doubt. But she still should have said no. She should have said no. And a little bit later, you know, they probably have the, the 
the easiest time talking to each other. But either way, it still is not good, and it was never going to set up a relationship for success. Of course, he was still wrong, though. The attraction crap and the stuff with the producer... Yeah, that wasn't good. He's so much better without Brennan, and Cringe. he never deserved to be married to me. You are a one, I am a ten. And do you see where it starts to come out with Emily that she's starting to be not so likable? This is not the person we saw on camera. So, there could be, maybe she's finally like, oh, I can say what I really feel. Maybe there's some of that. Maybe. I don't buy it. At least not 100%. He's, I'm a 10, he's a 1. Are you that full of yourself? Are you overcompensating? There's, there's issues there. Bre let's take Brennan off the table. Douche. That's easy. He's a douche. What's your deal? You went right back to what you were doing. I'm going to travel. Your friend's like, oh, I'll step out of the bedroom so you can sleep with guys. And she's like, no, 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 jokingly. So, come on, man. You're not going to take any responsibility. You're just going to say that you were 100% like, you know, he, I'm a 10, he's a 1. That, that's what you're going with. It's not, it, it does not behoove of you to be cocky like that. It doesn't look good on guys either. Like, there's confidence and there's cocky. That is cocky. Yes. No, I tried, I tried several times. She canceled every time. I, I every tried time several we organized, times. Look, at our, look through our text. Yeah. You said, your energy stresses me out. I don't need it right now. Good point. Again, this is, there's where it's like no context. Saying he didn't go, or she didn't go see him because, you know, he said your energy stresses me out. And then he gives the context. Yeah, after you canceled multiple times on me. I, <laughs> I mean, I mean, for real though, for real though, this is what I'm talking about. You strategically leave out context. Like, he was just a douche. He just said, no, I don't want you here. You're bad energy. Yeah, after you canceled five or six times, and then I said, look, just, just don't come. I mean, that's reasonable. It goes from being unreasonable to be like, oh, he just randomly said your energy is bad, to no, you didn't go several times, and then he said, nah, I'm good. You know, you, you obviously don't want to support me. There's a difference there. Big difference. We're a part of that deception that, of course, it turned into a show because you tried to deceive the process mm -hmm. and by trying to deceive the process you screwed yourself fair to say yeah okay at least at least kevin frazier in that moment tries to hold her accountable a little bit and make her say that I, I, you were a part of the deception you were a part of this he didn't do this with the other girls or at least not yet maybe in the second half he does but with her because this he's reading the room he doesn't want to go after any of the other girls right now but with Claire, he knows, because I'm sure they follow all the social media and all the people who say, oh, this is crap. Oh, look at Claire. She's manipulating. And they're like, okay, she was not as liked. So I can hold her accountable. The others really got the victim thing going good. And I can't really hold them accountable. So I'm going to hold her accountable. So he did. Good for him, at least on that one. And saying, weren't you at least a little bit a part of it? The fact that I don't know who you are outside of the lies, manipulation, control. The fact that six weeks ago you asked to get back together. What? But moments before called me a sociopath. Okay. Now, the problem with this is. Okay, again, no context. No context. She says, you asked to get back together six weeks ago, and then right before that, you called me a sociopath. No context. He tries to talk a little bit, and then they just move on. So that makes me say, okay, there was more to it than that. <laughs> but again, they're trying to leave out context and not, they held her accountable a little bit, and they're going to leave it at that. It, and that's crazy. I mean, that that's just insane. Come on. It's a problem, and you don't want to get back together? Just pull yourself out and move on with your life. Yeah. I've spoke my truth. No! No! There is no my truth. There is the truth, and there's your opinion. There is no my truth. I cannot stand that. This My truth is a way of saying you need to believe my opinion. Now, maybe when you say my truth, it is the truth. But as soon as you say my truth or speak your truth or anything like that, immediately dis just no no I, I don't care because if you're saying that there's there's not my truth there's not the, if i say my truth i just please hit me in the face just punch me in the face punch me right across the face and call it a day because that's not how it works i'm gonna make shirts that says there's no such thing as your truth there is your opinion because that's exactly what it is it's a way of people basically trying to make it seem like what they're saying is true when it may not be 
it, it's a cop out. It is nothing but a cop out. And she uses it a lot to be continued. To you, I felt that we had emotional intimacy. I felt that we had a lot of I think levels we did too, but I think intimacy, I but let it and you avoided it. <laughs> I think if anyone say anything that's true, I will give it to her because in the beginning, Again, with the whole, you know, Becca and Austin thing. In the beginning, I was like, she needs to let him take his time. Sometimes people take more time. But as the season went on, I'm like, this is just getting uncomfortable with the whole avoiding of intimacy and finding any reason, like, to get... Like, seriously, it is it it is the Family Guy episode where, you know, it's a guy that's like, you know, in the bed with some female, and he's like, wait, did you hear that siren? Wait, did you see that bird? And she's like, I didn't hear anything. And he's like, well, there's just so much going on. And the joke was, it's a guy trying to find an excuse because he can't get it up. <laughs> and, that's what, and that's what it kind of seemed like. Now, I don't think necessarily that was the case. Maybe it was, and if it was, he needed to say it. I think it was attraction, but he just never would say it. And she's holding him accountable by him saying, I think there wasn't. She's like, no, there, no, there really wasn't. And I think out of the couples, I believe her when she says it was more, you know, it wasn't something crazy off camera or anything like that. He wasn't exactly the same person, but it even though she was in on it and she should be held accountable for that because she should have said she didn't want to be in on it. I think that she's telling the truth when she's saying, look, the intimacy just wasn't there. Not even like just touching, cuddling, hu hugging, whatever was not there to a what you think with a marriage, even if you're married at first sight. Um, I know I'm not the person for him. I, I know for a fact. I think he knows that now. I think he knew it all along, to be honest. I'm... He did. He, he, he absolutely did. I think that he wasn't attracted and he didn't want to say it. And instead of, you know, in this case, I think it was doing her a disservice to string her along like that because I don't think that was so much the cameras. My opinion is that it was him not manning up and saying, I'm just not attracted to you. You know, it's okay to have a type. It's okay to not be attracted to someone. This is an interesting situation because you get married. But even so, look, if you're not attracted to a person and you just can't get there and you can't get past it, maybe it's wrong. But either way, you're doing them a disservice to not just say, hey, I'm sorry, you're just, I'm not feeling it. I mean, you don't have to be mean about it, but just, I'm not feeling it. I don't want to string you along. It's going to hurt regardless because you got married, but you don't have to just drag it out. And he did because he didn't want to man up and say, I'm just, you're, I'm just not into you. I'm just not. So that's the reason he got his man card revoked, but still not good. Austin came in afterwards and it was really hard because I was I'm gonna start crying because he just like holds me and cries and like I just was crying. So he holds you and cries. Okay, I, I like he actually showed some emotion off camera, and I think that meant something to her. Crying for him, yeah. What do you say? He just said that like he thinks that I could have gone even harder on him, and he thanked me for not. I think when he's around, you just you start to question, and I get okay. <laughs> Claire trying to be manipulative again. She's saying. He said, thank you, you could have gone harder on me. Okay, you know what? Give the guy points for that. That They didn't even show that on camera. Now, of course there are cameras around, but they didn't show it on camera. And, and according to her, he cried. Okay, he showed some emotion. Great. And said, you could have gone harder. I really appreciate it. Thank you. You know, basically like showing appreciation, showing that he cares. Too little, too late, sure. But then Claire comes in and says, well, I just think when he's around, you just can't, basically can't see things clear. Like... Oh, Counselor Claire, my God, you're not, you cannot possibly make a single dollar counseling, right? You can't. When you say it's a regret of yours, do you regret saying no on decision day? I regret mm -hmm. saying no on decision day. Do you wish? Okay, you regret saying no. She would say yes. I wish I was in a place where I could, where I felt more comfortable saying yes, Stephanie. See, this, when I hear stuff like that, I wish I was in a better place to say yes. That, that just says to me you weren't ready. And you know what? Same with Michael. I was like, okay, he got left at the altar. Again, I still think it could be a conspiracy theory that the production company came or production came up with to send a producer out there and make it look like it's this female, you know, that bailed on him. Who knows? I don't, I'm not saying he was in on that, but the production could have been. Okay, great. But you came back. You were trying, that says to me, you're not just ready. You're really ready because you're like, it didn't work out, but I am ready. Instead, you weren't. You never were. You should have been honest with yourself. And quite frankly, I don't think Chloe was either. I think she was trying to send him away with the whole five foster kids, a hundred animals, all that crap I think was a way to get him to send away. And then I still think that at the end, she kind of knew he wasn't there. And then that's when she said yes to kind of make herself look good. I mean, I think that there was some of that going on. 
look, the problem with cameras is no one wants to look bad. Even the people that aren't out for social media and all that crap, even the people who are really mostly in it genuinely still don't want to look bad. And so that causes a problem because you're not really yourself. You're just not yourself. You're, you're something that's not, you're an actor. And this cast took it up a whole nother notch, but you're just an actor. Have you met somebody else? No, absolutely not. My next relationship is going to be with the soulmate that my heart has been calling out for in this lifetime. Okay, well, what makes you think the next one is going to be different? That's how you cope? That's a, is that a coping mechanism? Because this didn't work out, so now you're saying the next one's going to be my soulmate. <laughs> I mean, come on, lady. You know what the thing is about a marriage and a relationship? You wake up every single day and say, I'm going to make it work. The soulmate thing, the love at first sight thing, all of those things, they fade. They just do. And then you're left with the person that you choose to be with every single day. Because you wake up and say, you know what? I love that person. I'm going to work for that person. I'm going to take care of that person. If you're a man, you want to provide, you want to protect, and you make that choice every day. Not to step out makes you a douchebag. Not to lie makes you a douchebag. And I say that because I'm a recovering addict. I have done a lot of lying. So trust me, I was a douchebag. But you know what? I'm better now because I've decided every single day to be a better person for my family, for my wife. And that's what you do when you're in a marriage. That is what you do. Not my next one's going to be my soulmate and it's going to be the one and that's going to carry us through. Lady, it ain't going to carry you but so far unless you do and make the effort. The first step to healing is reversing that and speaking our truth. And so here God dang it. <laughs> this girl cannot go without speaking our truth, my truth, your truth. Lady, you know what that says to me because you say it so much? You're just a liar. <laughs> you're a liar trying to convince people that your opinion or the lie you're saying is the truth. That's all it is. My God, it, I feel bad for the people who pay her for therapy. I really do because they're going to walk out worse. They're going to walk out worse than they, they walked in. So I just assumed everybody had. No, sex was off the table for me, baby girl. <laughs> what? Gone. Early. Okay, she's saying that like she's like took control and that was her. No, he shut down after like day two. And trust me, I was very critical of Orion the whole time. I had nothing but negative to say about Orion. But when you say, trust me, sex was off the table on day two with me. Yeah, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. You're trying to basically change the narrative now because you were in it for longer than you probably should be because you had a douchebag. And quite frankly, you weren't innocent either. Like, if the roles were flipped, you would have been the one playing the victim. But he got the best of you, and that's what happened. And now you're trying to say, oh, sex was off the table for me. Nah. Nah, he took it off the table for you, and now you're trying to make it seem like you're the one that did it. He used my accident to come out of this on top looking good what are you talking about he did not look maybe he thought he looked good he's the one that kept saying i saved your life nobody liked brennan in that moment so why are you trying to make something that no one said was a thing happen Th this is her like she looked flicking him off going down the hall and stuff like that oh wait maybe we're not there yet in a second you'll see that part but all these things like you know trying to go on the attack, trying to flip other people's opinions. And now it's like, and he just, he just took it and he, you know, it, he made himself look good. No, he didn't. No, I said from the get go, he looked like a douchebag. So what are you trying to frame here? Other than trying to get yourself some more victim points, you didn't need them. And it, when you see this contrast with the other stuff she's done, it's not a good look. So, yes, he may have been the more bad person in the relationship, but she was not innocent. At the very least, she was not ready. And this clearly shows some of the immaturity, some of these different contrasting things she's doing. There it is. <laughs> Walking down the aisle, flicking him off. Like, that's, that's what I'm talking about right there. I'm not going to say anything that won't help anything, but do damage. So when you're squinting your eyes and like oh looking God. like that. Okay, this was one of his big you know, kind of douchebag moments. What does that mean? Explain, explain. Hold on, hold on. I'm talking to her though. Yeah, I know. Let me, let me talk to her. Yeah, I get you. Okay, um, so let me talk to her. So, Brennan, I'm And he kept doing it. Okay, so that was one of his biggest douchebag moments. Yes, big douchebag moment. You don't have to do anything to Brennan other than say constantly, I was in it. I was in it. I was in it for the love. I was in it for the relationship. 
and and that's all you have to do. Unfortunately, she takes it a step further and tries to destroy every other person on the stage and tries to basically take whatever she's feeling, even though she wasn't ready for marriage either. I would much rather her come out and say, listen, I tried. He was not good in this relationship, but I also wasn't that ready for marriage. You know, she did have the issue of only having gone on like three dates with every person she's been with. When you do that, when you're sleeping with people, you know, quickly and not forming those bonds, it, it's a problem. It's not going to bode well for what you see a relationship being. And then when you jump on someone who is controlling like Brennan, it's not good. But then when you come off as you're trying to be like really vengeful, it's also not a good look. It just isn't. So I think she has some growing up to do. Brennan, Brennan has no business being with anybody, but we're going to see how it plays out because it's to be continued. We're seeing the next part next week, so it should be interesting. Look, no one really is unscathed. The only people in this I really don't think were that bad was probably out of the females, Becca. I would say that I think she's fallen into the trap of hanging out with Claire a little too much and hanging out with Emily, who's immature too much. And, you know, I don't think Lauren's good either, but I think Becca caught some problems with that, but she's overall seems to be a decent person. I think Cameron overall seems to be a decent person. The rest of them have some faults. I mean, Michael and Chloe weren't that bad, but I'm talking about the original cast, really. So this is going to be interesting. It seems to get even more kind of crazy in the next one. So we'll see how it plays out. Either way, it didn't end well. And it's it's just, I mean, if the, if, if the rate of, you know, success is really 11%. Again, still haven't looked <laughs> into it. I probably will after the reunion specials and do a video on that. But 11%, God, in this one you didn't have any, zero. Clearly it's for the ratings. Clearly they're trying to be in it for the train wreck, which if you really want to see a show that's about love, it's not going to bode well for you. So sad, but still entertaining. So what are you going to do? I appreciate the support. Thank you so much. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Also, become a member if you want to support even more so we can grow the channel. I definitely support or I definitely appreciate that. Thank you so much. And I will see y'all next time.